Hey, thanks for checking out Nuts and Bolts with Tone, and welcome to my channel. Today we have a 7.3 power stroke with the worst fuel cooling system I've ever seen contaminated with diesel fuel. So thanks to my friends at Riff Raff Diesel, we have a set of stainless steel cups we're going to be installing and using their tool to remove and install the cups. I'm going to show you how to do that, and it's a piece of cake. Now their tool, you can rent it for 75 bucks or you can buy it for 400 whatever you want to do. So anyways, let's get into it. Let me show you how easy this is. Now when I do injector cups, my goal is that when I get done, to have zero fuel in the cooling system. It's very common to get done with this and have a little bit of fuel that ends up floating back in the bottle. So what I do on these is... If the bottle is really, really bad, I'll replace it when I do the job. If it's not extremely bad, I will clean it the best I can, do the job, flush the cooling system, and then in 5,000 miles when it comes back for an oil change, I will replace the bottle, and that'll capture any fuel that's left over. So I like to use these Gripty mats here. They're nice silicone trays. But first, got to disconnect the batteries because i got to get these things charged. I've already charged these batteries four or five times because they're AAA batteries. And AAA batteries suck, as you all know. So I'm going to pop that water pump off. I gave it a good sniff. That cooling system was disgusting. I It smelled like the most god-awful diesel smell I've ever smelled. Now on the map sensor, I don't like to disconnect the rubber hose because every time you disconnect the rubber hose, you take a chance on... Uh, messing up the hose or the connection and the map sensor is the boost sensor so that's how it determines how much boost the engine is building you don't want to mess that up so i just disconnect the electrical connector unbolt it and move it over to the engine unless i have to disconnect it just going to pop off this intake air tube last little bit so we can get to the valve cover now I'm replacing every hose on the truck and the heater hoses crisscross. So I like to make a little drawing of heater hoses on vehicles so I don't want to have to figure out which one went where. In my last video of injector cups and injectors, I pulled the compressor off. So the compressor does not have to come off and you don't even have to take the oil fill tube off. The valve cover will still come out. With the compressor off, you have more room and it's easier. Now with the compressor on, I will say that first injector is a little bit trickier and the valve cover gasket is a lot trickier because it has to go up and underneath the compressor, but you don't have to take the compressor out. You can get it out. It's just that very first glow plug and injector is a little difficult. So we use GB manufacturer uh, valve cover gaskets and they come with the harness attached to them. We've had no problems. Probably one of the most important steps in removing injectors on this truck is draining the oil rails. There's two plugs, front and rear. You're going to take them both out, but the rear is going to continue to drain and it's going to take a while to drain all the oil out. So if you don't take this plug out and you pop the injectors out, your engine is going to fill with oil and it's going to get hydrolocked. And then it's a pain in the butt to clear and it makes a big fat mess. So just take the plugs out. There's only two bolts to take out to take out these injectors. The first one is the oil deflector here. It's going to be an Allen. You're going to take the bolt and the oil deflector out. And then also the bolt that's below the injector that's that holds the hole down in. Now just use a adjustable pry bar, pop these injectors. Uh, they pop out really easy. They shouldn't have popped out that easily. Uh, so once you pull the injector out, you wanna have a rag handy and a screwdriver, and you wanna shove a rag down in the hole to try to sop up as much oil and fuel and coolant so you don't lock up the motor. It's just easier this way. Now these injectors had some weird jelly or grease uh i had this on tiktok and there was a lot of people that commented some people said it was assembly lube some people said it was bearing grease some people said it was somebody used biodiesel um i'm not real sure what was going on i know the fuel in the cooling system did not smell like traditional diesel fuel but it was fuel and whatever was on the end of this injector it smelled like that 
But the fuel filter bowl did not smell like that. It was only in the cooling system. So, anyways, we're going to get it fixed up, but just some weird stuff along the way. The injector cups must have been done by Ford because, look, there's no bolts in the valve cover. No, I'm just kidding. I already took them out. Now, here's what I was talking about with the oil rail. So the oil rail is above those plugs. It's a little chamber that runs, well, it's not a little chamber, that runs along the top of the head, front to rear, right there where that stamp was. So there's the front plug. You see nothing's coming out. And there's the rear plug. And it just continues to drain. So, you, like I said, you want to pull these valve covers off and pull those plugs out. As soon as you get the harnesses out of the way, let them drain. I have this, uh, it's upside down, but I have this Ulta Tools uh, adjustable uh, little mini pry bar. And you use this and just pop the injectors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a rag right here. And I'm going to set the injector right here while I shove a rag in this hole. So you'll see I'm just going to, just going to lift it up like like that and then it's just going to give it like a little eh, and then it pops and then now we're going to shove something down in the hole so these ones aren't too bad i took when i took the other side out um all these rags were pretty clean the back one the, the back cylinder was uh completely soaked with oil so most of the oil is back there because of just the way that the the engine sits and so now that we've got this out, we can go put this away. Go ahead and do the same thing here. So it's not too bad. I used to use a wrench before I had this mini pry bar. I would just use like a 5 8 wrench and you could use that and pop them. Now these, I don't know if it's because of what's going on. All these injectors have grease on the end of them. <clears throat> I guess Ford at one point did injector cups in this and uh, obviously they didn't do it right because we have a bunch of fuel in the coolant. So, and, and these don't normally pop out this easy. Like I literally barely pry at all and they come out. The other thing that you got to watch out for on these, and uh, I'll put a link in the description on of a video I have on how to do this job, like a step by step. You want to make sure that you're laying on my stomach here. The key is that you make sure that this copper washer right here is on the injector and not in the bore. Um, in these, we're pulling the cups out so it won't matter because it would sit in the bottom of the cup. But um, if you're just pulling these out, you wanna make sure this copper washer comes out with the injector. Now this driver's side rear injector is cylinder number eight. You see that LL? That stands for long lead injector. It's for cackling. Cackling is engine noise and it's used to kind of balance it out. So you need to make sure that when you, if you have this injector that you put a long lead injector back. If you buy a set of injectors from Ford, they're gonna sell you seven regular injectors and one long lead injector. So here's the passenger side. Uh, you can see the starter is hanging down here. Uh, luckily this is an older one, so it's just two bolts. Uh, later ones is three bolts. But anyways, there's the block drain right there. It's just a quarter drive uh, hole or quarter drive socket to take it out. So you got to drain the block because if there's any fuel left in the block, then it will just make its way to the bottle and then stay in the system. So I'm going to, I've got the whole cooling system drained. So now I'm going to pull the cups. And after I replace the cups, I will... Put the water pump back on and uh and build the cooling system back and then fill up the cooling system and drain it and fill it up and drain it and i'll use degreaser and try to get as much fuel out as i can it's friday it's time to go home all 
All right, so I got the rags in there to keep any uh, coolant oil from running down into the cylinder. All right, so step one is going to be, we need to remove this eight millimeter bolt here um, because the tool uses those bolt holes to remove the sleeves. make sure that you put these bolts back in before you put your injectors in because they don't need to be out for injector service all right so down to the bottom there's a hole all right so a penny fits perfectly down in the in the bottom of the hole to catch any uh, droppings any of uh, the shavings so we're just going to place that down there so now you're going to take the tool, here's the tool here, and there is an arrow uh, right there. And that arrow needs to face the valve springs. So it's going to go down like that, okay. And the kit comes with bolts, 12 millimeter bolts. I mean, uh, 12 point bolts. So we're gonna we're gonna thread those in. They don't need to be tight, they just need to be snug. This is just centers the tool. All right, so that one's in. And that one's in, okay. So now, we need this nut up so we can thread in the, the top part, the main bolt in the center because it has the, the teeth that are gonna dig into the cup. So what you gotta do, is you gotta turn this outer nut, the top nut, the long one, the bolt I should say, not the nut, the bolt. So you're gonna turn the bolt. All right, so there we are. And we've made contact. So now we're gonna turn this. This is a uh, three quarter inch uh, so uh, socket. So we're gonna turn this bolt. One to two full turns. Cause it is biting into the cup. So once you get a good bite in the cup, Now we're gonna thread the nut down. Hopefully this uh, works here. So now we're gonna use this center nut and we're gonna tighten that down. Uh, that's not gonna work. All right, let's try a 22. My seven eighths isn't deep enough. All right, and so now you're gonna tighten this center nut down. And when you tighten this center nut down, what it's doing is it's pulling the cup out of the, the sleeve or cup out of the head. And once you feel it get loose, one of two things happened. It pulled your sleeve, it pulled your cup, or it or it released itself and let go because you didn't have enough teeth uh, into the sleeve. Okay, so we're pretty loose there. So now we're gonna go ahead and unthread the tool. 
let's see if we get this first try. Uh, doesn't always work first try. Sometimes if you do it, it'll, the first time you try it, it won't bite. So then you'll have to redo it and then you'll have to kind of use more threads to get it out. All right, so let's see if it pulled it out. All right, awesome. So we have the sleeve out. Now I'm not gonna tip this upside down because this sleeve has a bunch of metal in it. So now we're gonna unthread this sleeve from the tool and get our penny and we're gonna go to the next one. All right, so you're gonna go ahead and get your sleeve and uh, you wanna make sure it's clean and dry and there's no oil. Just gonna wipe it off like that. These came fresh out of the box, so there shouldn't be any oil on these. You're gonna take your cup and you're gonna slide it on the tool. Then you're gonna get your retaining compound, your Loctite 620, and you're gonna put that on your cup, how you need to put it at the top and the bottom. The Riff Raff tool comes with a picture directions showing you how to do everything. Then we're gonna take the tool and we're gonna put it back in the hole. We're gonna put the bolts in, put those in, but you want to keep the center of the tool up so that the cup doesn't touch anything because you have your retaining compound going around the top and the bottom. And if it touches anything, then you're going to have a, a not fully sealing uh, area and then you could have a leak. So you're just going to get that in and then the tool is going to push it down. Now the tool is 35 ish foot pounds. It's approximately 35 foot pounds to seat this tool. Oh, the bolts are still in. That's because I used my tool for half and I wanted to compare the Riff Raff tool to my tool. The Riff Raff tool has a lot of finer threads, so it produces almost no metal and it bites easier than most of the other tools which have coarse threads, produce a lot of metal and are much harder to bite into the cup. And you wanna make sure that these bores are really dry and clean. You've gotten all the Loctite out, you use your bore brush, all that stuff. All right. So you wanna do this by hand. You're gonna use your ratchet and you're gonna run that center down until you feel it start to seat. Now the first one's gonna feel weird because you're gonna feel like it's tight, and then when you torque it, you realize that the cup actually has to press down like a half inch into the head, so it's gonna be a tight pull, so that's why you use the torque wrench. Got it pretty close. Now it's time for the torque wrench. Want to make sure I get this right. I don't like doing jobs twice. Any jobs, especially big jobs. So we're going to go ahead and start to torque this. Oh, it's got to turn a lot more than I thought. Now let me get a little extension. Make it easier. Now we're ready. Okay. So let's start to torque this thing. Oh, wow. This is pressing in a lot further than I thought. This is the first time I've done it this way. The tool I have, you put the cup on, a, on, a, on the tool and you hammer it in until it bottoms out. I like this tool better because this tool, for one, you're not hammering where you have little access. On this side, hammering them in is fine, but on the passenger side, hammering them in is not fine. Uh, the first two cylinders work great. The last two are really hard to hammer. And you have to worry that you're, that you're hammering them in properly. Now, when it says 35 foot-pounds approximately, you have to kind of feel. It's just like hammering something. You could be hammering something and you need to kind of feel and listen for it. And you can kind of tell when something bottoms out. So you can tell when you're up against a wall with this. So now it's time to get the tool out. So now you're just going to take your ratchet 
and you're going to loosen up the center point of the tool. Now remember, it has an O-ring on there. That's the only thing attaching the tool to the cup. So that O-ring should come right out. Now, I mean, if you put this tool in, torqued it down, and left the tool sitting there for like a day and a half, okay, then maybe it wouldn't come out because your Loctite might have bonded with the O-ring. But anyways, that would be kind of dumb. I wouldn't be doing that. So once you break the nut, once you break the center, the center bolt free, then you're just going to take your socket and take your 12 millimeter bolts out and then pull the tool off. So now that we got the tool off, now it's time to clean up the excess Loctite. Now I know it looks like I used way too much Loctite. I, I wanted it to see. So the directions for the riffraff tool tell you to wait 12 hours before starting the engine to let the Loctite compound set. So probably want to follow those directions because I don't think you want to do this job again. And, and it's quite expensive to do it. Now it's time to clean out the bore. So I usually take a rag, I shove it down the hole with the screwdriver, twist the screwdriver, which is going to twist the rag, and get most of the Loctite out. Then I'll take the rag, flip it upside down where there's no Loctite on the rag, wipe it out again, and then I will spray the rag, spray a new rag with brake clean, wipe it out. Because your O-rings on your injector are going to seal in there, so you don't want any Loctite at all in there. Now one tool you didn't see me use on this one, which I've done in the past, you want to have a good 3-inch mirror, because on some of these it's really hard to see. Uh, the number eight cylinder you can't see down the hole and the back three on the passenger side you can't see so you want to use a mirror so you can look and make sure you have it clean uh, even just doing injectors uh, you want to make sure that you have that to have it really really clean no leaks so once you're all done your your cup is installed and all clean that's what it should look like when you use the stainless steel cups from riffraff diesel Looks really good. I like it. That's what it should look like before you put the cup in. Now on these, sometimes you got to take a pick or a screwdriver and really run it around the bottom of the hole down there at the bottom of the bore of the head to get any of the old Loctite out. Even using the bore brush. I would use the bore brush and then I would take a screwdriver and I would knock big chunks of Loctite out. Make sure it's clean. All right, got the cups in on this side. Uh, I like to stick rags back in the holes uh, to make sure that no oil or uh, or anything runs down the cup and compromises the locking compound. So I've got rags shoved in the holes also just to keep anything from going in there. Uh, so now we got to get the other side clean and, uh, and get those cups installed. But this is working out great with this riffraff tool. Thanks for watching the video. I'm pretty sure after you watch this video, replacing these fuel injector cups is going to seem even easier than it was after watching my last one, where I used much more difficult tools to remove and install the cups. This one, piece of cake, no question. When this one left, I knew everything was perfect. So, thanks for watching. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, you get notified of all my future content, which you definitely don't want to miss. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.